Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. I picked up this 2016 Lenovo X1 Carbon Ultrabook from eBay for 99 bucks. It's small, lightweight, and surprisingly powerful for its age. I grabbed it for my upcoming trip to DEF CON because, because why not? This seems like a really neat older Ultrabook and it gives me a neat place to try out some Linux distros in a non-virtual way. Let's see if this thing is up for the task. All right, let's take a closer look at this thing. First impressions? It's so much thinner than I expected, which is a plus for portability. The build quality feels solid. Typical Lenovo fare. There are a few battle scars, some scratches on the lid, and a bit of wear around the ports. The keyboard is also starting to show its age, and to make matters worse, it's missing the delete key. The little red pointer nub thing is also missing. We'll sort that out later. Okay, let's talk about specs. Under the hood, we've got a decent amount of RAM, 16 gigs, should be enough for most tasks. Storage wise, it's got a 256 gig NVMe SSD, so boot times and loading apps should be pretty snappy. As for the processor, it's packing an Intel Core i7 6600U. That's a solid choice for a laptop of this age, and it should handle most tasks without breaking a sweat. And powering the visuals, we've got an Intel HD Graphics 520. It's integrated graphics, so don't expect to be gaming on Mac settings, but it should be fine for basic tasks. And the last spec is one that came as a bit of a surprise. The eBay listing had this listed as having a 1920 by 1080 display, but what arrived in fact is actually a 2560 by 1440 display. So that was quite the pleasant surprise. Now, the battery is a different story. It's technically there, but don't get your hopes up for long battery life. I ran a quick test and it looks like it's holding about 4% of its original capacity. Safe to say, it's pretty much useless. I've already ordered a replacement and we'll see how that goes. One thing that's always bugged me about Ultrabooks is the lack of physical ethernet ports. This one's no exceptions. So I'll need to grab a dongle for those times when Wi-Fi just isn't cutting it. But hey, that's a small price to pay for a machine this thin and light. All right, time to breathe some new life into this old machine. I've got a Manjaro Linux bootable USB ready to go. Let's see how this old machine handles a fresh install. The process was pretty straightforward except for having to dive into the BIOS to disable Secure Boot. When it came to choosing a desktop environment, I opted for a GNOME when selecting which Manjaro image to try. I figured I'd give it a shot, but I've always been a fan of XFCE for its lightweight nature. If GNOME starts to feel sluggish on this older machine, I won't hesitate to switch back to XFCE. We'll see how it goes. All right, let's see how this thing performs. I've been using it for a few days now, and I'm pleasantly surprised. Basic tasks like browsing email and word processing are smooth as butter. Even with multiple tabs open and a few applications running, I haven't noticed any significant lag. I've also tried editing some photos in GIMP, and it handled it pretty well. There was a slight delay when working with giant image files, but overall it was usable. I'm curious to see how it handles video editing, but I'll save that for another day. Watching YouTube videos is a breeze. No buffering issues, and the video quality looks good. I'm impressed with how well this older hardware holds up to everyday tasks. By the way, what's the oldest tech that you still use on a daily basis, not counting our fun, truly retro things? Share your relics in the comments below. Battery life, like I said earlier, was a disaster. But fear not, the replacement battery has arrived. Let's tackle that now. After swapping out the main battery, I uh, noticed a couple times messages indicating like the BIOS battery may have been failing. So I went ahead and grabbed a CR2016 from the store. And I'm not gonna show you what I did because it's not the way to do it. I essentially just uh, took the leads from the existing wires and kind of snipped those off and wrapped them really tight with some black tape around the battery. I don't recommend doing that. I recommend getting one like this. That's the proper thing to do. And I used a little bit of blue tack and pressed that down. And you may also notice, I hope it looks a little bit cleaner here because I took it out back and used my power duster to blow things out really well. So I think that cleaned it up a good bit. After that, I put things back together and tried to give it a pretty decent cleaning.
Okay, new battery installed. Let's see if this makes a difference. I'm gonna run a quick check with this utility to see if the battery capacity looks any better. Wow, that's a massive improvement. I'm much happier with this. This is how it's supposed to be. Now let's tackle that missing delete key. I've got a spare keyboard here that I can cannibalize for parts. After removing the cap from the spare keyboard, I noticed that the mechanisms are not exactly the same between these two. So I think I might hold off and wait until later to deal with this. Maybe it'll pop on and work properly. Or if this whole keyboard is compatible, I could just swap the whole keyboard possibly. But again, I'll save that for a later day. There we go. Almost as good as new. With this fresh battery and a decent cleaning, this thing is ready to rock. Ah, except for one thing. And trigger warning, we're about to sticker this thing up. Let's go. And away we go! This X1 Carbon is quickly becoming my favorite laptop. I think it's gonna be my daily driver for quite a while now. I just really don't think you can go wrong getting a used ThinkPad. You get so much bang for your buck in my opinion. Now between the battery and AC adapter, the ethernet dongle, that spare keyboard, and stuff like that, I'm into this whole thing altogether for about 190 bucks. Some might say for 200 bucks, I could probably get a brand new laptop and maybe I could, but would it be 2560 by 1440, be just a little bit over a half inch thick, weigh only 2.6 pounds, have 16 gigs of RAM? I don't know. That would be a tall order to get for that amount of money, in my opinion. What do you think? All right, that's it for this episode. If you made it this far, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.